I love, love, love it up. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's Julie. And if you like makeup tutorials, makeup reviews, first impressions, makeup hauls, and all things beauty, then you've come to the right channel. In today's video, I want to address the elephant in the room, which is my shaved head, which I'm loving. When I posted my video the other day, a lot of people, you know, commented they loved it. A lot of people have stories about their hair journeys. So I wanted to kind of share my hair journey with you guys while I do my makeup. So hopefully you guys are interested in hearing why I <laughs> shave my head and stop wearing my wigs. I'm not gonna stop wearing them completely, but I'm not gonna be wearing it like I used to. So I'm gonna do my brows while I'm talking. Some people were asking like, is it a medical reason? You know, did you have a breakup? Like what, what's going on that you just chopped off all your hair? Well, it is a combination of a few things. The most important thing and the thing that really motivated me was I was gaining a lot of weight sitting here doing YouTube. When I say doing YouTube, I mean like filming, editing, you know, it takes a long time. Editing is very time consuming and filming is time consuming, but the prep work to film a video, right? Let me tell you how my day would go when I was prepping a film. It's gonna be hard for me to talk and do makeup, but I would, you know, prep my wig. Sometimes I would do it the night before, which made it a lot easier. I used to like curl it. They would be washed already. I would style it and curl it, and then I would put it on in the morning, or you know, the day that I'm getting ready to film. So, you know, you try to put it on and get the lace to look as, you know, as natural as I could get it to look. I'm not a professional hairdresser, but I do have a hair journey. My hair journey started at the age of 13. I was letting this girl put a perm in my hair, right? It was a girl that lived in my building. I didn't know how to do perms and stuff at the time. And she was my friend. So she was like, oh, I can put your perm in for you. She was older than me, like three years older than me. And I was like, oh, great. So she puts the perm in, I'll never forget. It was a Revlon perm, one of those Revlons from back in the days that was like $3.99. So she puts the perm in and, um, you know, on the box it tells you how long to leave it in or whatever. I'm burning, right? I'm like, my scalp is burning. She's like, oh, it's not straight. It's not straight. I listened to her because I didn't know no better. I was like, my, my head, after a while, my head is like really burning, burning. So she was like, just run through the hallway. It'll cool it off. It's not straight. So me being a novice to relaxes and stuff like that, I was like, okay, let me listen to her. Let me do what she say. When I washed the perm out, the perm had been in my hair about an hour. So when I took the relaxer out and I washed it, and back in those days, sponge rollers, were the thing, right? So I washed my hair and I put my rollers in. So I left it, you know, curls until the next day. When I tried to take the rollers out, my hair was plastered to my scalp. Like the whole front of my hair was damaged more than anything else, but my hair was plastered to my scalp. When I tell you I had burns on my scalp, when I tell you my hair was plastered to my scalp, it was plastered to my scalp. So I had to go to the doctor. They gave me some ointment to put on it. I always had hair issues after that. My hair was always very fine. So it was the type of hair that you can go and get a fresh doobie back in the days, which turned into a wash and set. I will be talking about um, the products. Some of the products that I use today and whatever I use, I'm gonna make sure it's listed in the description box. I went to the doctor, they gave me the cream. When I say the hair was plastered to my scalp and a lot of my skin was missing, like it, it was crazy. It took, I don't know, months for it to heal. And then I wound up having to get my first short haircut. Hold on, I should have started before that. <laughs> I should have started before that because I did have a hair story before that. Back in the days, my mother had put a classy curl. Yeah, that's where I should have started. Okay, let me backtrack. My mother had put a classy curl in my hair. And I know I'm telling my age, but it's okay. So my mother put a classy curl in my hair, which was a home jerry curl. And I'm going to say she did it on a Saturday, right? She put the classy curl in there on a Saturday. By Sunday, all my hair was gone. <laughs> Every drop of my hair around the sides and the back. I mean, we're going. I had a long patch in the top of my head, like Woody Woodpecker. 
And I used to wear this big green click clack in my hair, which was, you know, a bobo. It was crazy because I, I was in the fourth grade at the time. I got teased and all kind of stuff. And it was like, what do you do as a, a kid and your mother is experimenting on your hair and it falls out. So anyway, I wound up getting a jerry curl some months after that, back when they had the little red rollers, right? So then, um, fast forward to the time I was just telling you about when I was 13, and the girl put the perm in my hair and burnt my scalp. I mean, like, burnt it for real. My, my scalp was never the same. This side of my head was always the thinner side. This was the really, really burnt side. And, you know, I don't know if you could see, like, the burntness because you know the scalp is very discolored because the hair was just freshly cut like i could see like the parts if you look at it really good you could see where i used to part it and this would be the braid right here and i would have a part here and this would be the braid here and as time progressed i, I did so many things with my hair i wore braids i wore weaves i used to love you know getting box braids and corn rolls and stuff like that and for years, like, it was good. I would be able to wear different styles. But after I reached my 40s, my hair started to really become different. Like, real different. Like, it was so, so weak. It would get long and it would be thin. I couldn't hold a style. That was just an e.l.f. concealer that I carved out my eyes. But now I'm going to use this P. Louise base. So, yeah. So, anyway, you know, I would get, you know, corn rolls and everything. And for years, I could do all kind of strenuous stuff ponytails, um, you know, just everything. Like anything, finger waves, short haircuts, everything. I had I had it all growing up. What would happen is like I would have certain people that would try to get over when they do your hair. I started doing my own braids probably at about 15. I used to box braid my whole head and I used to do other people's hair. And then as time progressed, like people want their hair done, all my friends and family would know I wanted to pay. So I stopped doing it because box braids are very, very time consuming. I had weaves and you had people that they weren't worried about the amount of tension that they were putting on your scalp. And, you know, being a, a young person that wasn't familiar with hair at the time, you know, you don't know that they pulling out your hair and damaging your follicles. As time progressed, you know, I went to the dermatologist to see, you know, why my hair it's so thin, like what's going on? So the doctor told me that I had very small to no hair follicles. That's why my hair was so thin. And I was like, what? Like I didn't even understand what he was talking about. It didn't make sense to me. So he was like, yeah. So they did a biopsy and all of that because they want to check to see if, you know, everything is good with your scalp. And everything was okay. It was just that that was what he told me. Your follicles are very small. It was like, well, can you do anything for it? And he was like, no. So I was like, all right. I tried everything on the market to help my hair grow. I'm using this here to just kind of set it a little, a little bit. I want to try to use this Glam Light palette again. So I'm not going to put as much powder and I'm just going to set up here. I'm just going to go in up here. I'm not going to set the lid because I want to see how these shadows work this time. You know, like I said, I had braids and weaves and, you know, when wigs came out, I think like the first wig that I had was the little short wigs that they would do with like the 21 pieces of hair. It was so cute. It looked like my hair, like it was wonderful, but that glue, like they would put the stocking cap on your head and then they would put paper towel around it and then they would glue the hair onto the paper towel and mold it to your head. It was very itchy. It was very cute. Uh, eventually you could take it off. Like eventually you could take it off, but it never went back on the same way. So anyway, um, you know, I did that. People would always try to get over. So I just started learning how to do my own stuff. So I started learning how to do my, my own weaves, my own everything. I mean, when I say everything, my own twists, just anything that I had to get done to my hair because I used to fly from New York to Atlanta at one time to get my hair done and you would think that people would care that you flying in to get your hair done that they would have your order right when you get there so I ordered the hair from the guy he was um doing my girlfriend's hair and her hair used to look so pretty I was like okay if I gotta go to Atlanta to get the look that I want then that's what I'm gonna do so I'll I, I ordered my hair, I sent the money, and then I get to 
Atlanta. And I wanted long hair because I always was like, listen, I got to channel my inner Beyonce. Because at this time, I'm in my, I'm going to say early 30s, right? So I was like, I want to channel Beyonce. I want 22 inches. You know, I don't want the 14 inches. When I got there, I was so upset that I got there. And he was like, oh, no, I ordered 14 inches. I said, 14 inches? That's not what I asked you for. So now I'm upset because I'm like, I flew down here to get my hair done. And you don't have the right hair. So he was like, well, I have to order it. And uh, I guess you can come back in two weeks. And I was like, I don't live around the corner. Like, are you serious? He did the hair or whatever. Because, you know, I'm, I'm like, I can't leave without my hair done. So, like, when I left there, I looked like a school mom. I was like, this is not not what I paid for. I was very upset. I was like, okay, so it's not I could do at this point, but get my hair done. So he did it and I went back home and I went to work and everybody that I had told that I was flying to get my hair done, they was like, <laughs> you left here to get that? So whatever. So I wound up going back in two weeks and it was a lot of the same BS. Like he got the hair, then I left the other hair because he was like, okay, being that you are um, going to come back, I will just order some more hair for you and you pay the difference or whatever so I was like okay so now I was in the shop so long that day that I forgot the hair that I paid for there the shorter hair so I'm gonna put this on first so I, I was like okay well oh I wanted to do purple let me do purple well, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do purple. So anyway, I left the hair there. I called back and he tells me he threw the hair in the garbage. So needless to say, those two were my only trips to Atlanta to get my hair done. <laughs> I was like, I'm, people don't respect your time or your money. And you know, I guess he figured, oh, she got money. She could fly in to get her hair done. Yeah, she got money. So it wasn't cool. So I found a guy in New York that did a halfway decent job. So I was like, all right. So I would go to him, he would do my hair. I would go to his house and he would do my hair. And so, you know, we were cool. Like he was he was a nice guy. He disappeared after a while. I was like, where did he go? Like, where what's going on? Where did he go? So he disappeared. I found him like on, I don't know, I guess Facebook was around at the time. So I found him and I was like, hey, like where'd you disappear to? He used to live in the Bronx and I used to travel to the Bronx to get my hair done. So I was like, okay. So he was like, oh, I'm in Manhattan now. I was like, oh, well, that's even better. So I drive to Manhattan and <laughs> I go to uh, the address and I get there and it was a situation going on. All the furniture was outside. Long story short, I don't even need to tell you that, but I stopped going to him because he invited me to his house to get my hair done and they had an infestation at the time. And instead of him saying, hey, I can't do your hair right now, you invited me to your your home when you knew that you had stuff going on there and it wasn't cool so I just wasn't comfortable with people if they didn't have a shop or something like that so I just started doing my own hair so over the years you know my edges would thin if I would get stressed out like my whole top of my head would fall out when I say like I went and got my hair weave one time and the leave out the next day it was gone like the whole top was gone and I was like what's going on but anyway it was from stress so I was like oh this is crazy so I would have to take my little 12 strands of hair and try to cover up my tracks then they came out with closures which I think was the best thing for people that don't have full hair or hair at the top so the closures were the first things to come out and then they came out with the frontals or whatever but I started making my own wigs I used to sew them by hand and you know I love making my my wigs I loved just doing it it was very relaxing and all of that so I was like okay long story short I'm telling you about how I started doing my own hair and I think that when you don't go to a professional sometimes you may cut corners or not even realize that you put in too much tension on your hair even though I used to do like different methods like I, I knew what was too much tension on my hair sometimes I would go and get my my weave done this was before I started making wigs I would go and get my weave done and my edges would be gone by the time I got home because the tension from the braids and then from the hair being sewn on you know that's how weak and fragile my hair was so I started doing it myself because when I was doing it I could feel what was going on on my hair you know I was like okay I know what's too tight and what's not so you think that you know and then you you really don't because the hair still falls out so I was like wow this is crazy so anyway I went to um, a doctor 
somebody recommended. It was like, oh, she could bring your hair back. She could bring your edges back. You could get the injections. So I did that. I got injections. I went to several different dermatologists and then they was like, oh no, you gotta go to, you know, a black dermatologist because they, they know our our hair. So she looked at my scalp and she's like, oh yeah, I could definitely, you know, bring your hair back. They tell you anything to get your money. I was going to get the injections. It was $75 every time I had to go and get the injection. And so I went, I'm gonna say maybe three or four times. And then the hair in other spots was falling out. Like whatever she was giving me, it didn't help my hair. It didn't make it grow in and it was coming out in other spots. So I said, I guess this is not for me. So um, I went to another dermatologist. They did like a another biopsy. This was years later than the first time that I went. And they were like, um, you know, we could try these injections to see if it does anything. And they did the biopsy and all of that. It, it didn't help. Like it, it just didn't help. I found out later that um, my rheumatoid arthritis, which is the autoimmune disease that I have, it was causing my hair to break off and to thin because it causes a lot of inflammation in your body. You know, you just don't know how it's going to react. So basically, that was my issue. As you get older, things break down even more. When I tell you I tried everything that said it's going to make my hair grow over the years and nothing really made it stay. Like it would grow, but it wouldn't stay. You know, I was like, okay. This is this is what it is. Then I started wearing my wigs again. So I have like so many wigs. Like when I say so many wigs, I have so many wigs. When your edges are thin or when your hair is thin, it doesn't make a difference. Like the stocking cap will rub your hair out. Just everything. So anyway, I think I skipped over the part when I went to get the biopsy. They told me I had alopecia. I had traction alopecia. So it was basically in this part of my hair down here and like a cross in the back, right? And I was like, oh my God. So I was like, was there anything that could be done? And basically they was like, no. That's when they told me that I could try the injections, which I did. I did them for months and it didn't make a difference. So I just stopped doing it. And that's when I wound up cutting my hair. I think that's when I wound up cutting my hair. That was the first time I cut it. Cause I actually cut it, this is the third time. Yeah, I cut it and I liked it. It was cute. It took a while getting used to, but you know, when you feel more comfortable when people are accepting of it. Like they're like, oh, that's cute, whatever, whatever. So yeah, I wore it for a while, short and cute and I liked it. <laughs> then I let it grow back. So that's why you could see like the light spots here where no sun was getting to it. Cause even, those areas I didn't have hair or it was real thin. So you could see the difference in the scalp. Like I was looking at it today and I was like, oh, I could see where I used to braid it. And I think once I go out in the sun, it'll all like, I guess, become uniform because you could see discoloration. It looks like little hair, <laughs> but it's actually not. It's just, just the discoloration of the scalp. I haven't been outside with it yet because it's chilly. So even if I was to go out, I would have a hat on. Cause even in my house, sometimes, I walk around with the hat on because it's drafty. I don't want to get sick because you could get sick with your head being exposed like this, especially when it's new and your head is not used to not having no hair on it. So I just got over a few situations. So I was like, mm -mm, I don't want to get sick again. So anyway, I kept saying for like about the last eight months, I was like, I'm just going to cut this hair off because when I would prep my hair, to do my videos, I would, you know, I, I take my hair, I wash it, and my hair would come out from the root. Like, I wash my hair, I, you know, put the best conditioners on it, everything sulfate free and all of that, and I comb it out, and big gobs of hair. When I say big gobs of hair come out, it was crazy. It was like, what am I saving this for? I would check it out every time that I've washed my hair. I would be like, no, I'm just gonna braid it back up, and maybe next time. So, <laughs> the other day, I woke up and I was like, you know what? I wanna go to the gym because I'm looking at how much weight that I have gained. A lot of times, I didn't wanna mess my hair up. Like, I didn't wanna go to the gym and sweat because now I gotta go and do this whole process of laying the hair down again and curling it. And it was just all very time consuming. Like, the whole process was just very time consuming. You know, just getting ready to film. Not even filming, just getting ready to film. So, the other day, I was sitting there and I was getting ready to 
put my wig on and I looked at myself in the mirror and I, I said, I'm cutting this hair off today. So in the group chat that I had with my sisters and my mother, I was like, guys, today's the day I'm gonna cut this hair off. And they were like, go ahead. Like my, my younger sister, the first time I cut my hair, she cut her hair with me. She was like, no, we, we gotta do this together. So I did it and we both rocked it short. It was cute. So this time she was like, nah, do it. And my older sister was like, yeah, just like, go ahead, do it. So I did. I went in the bathroom, I set up my camera because I did film me cutting it. I cut the front first. I cut the front and maybe I will put some of the footage in so you can see. But the first piece that I cut was the front because once I cut that piece, it was no stopping me out. Like I had to continue. I just did it and I talked through it and I had my reasons. Like I got tired of using not going to the gym because I don't want my hair to get messed up because I got to film a video. You know. When you wear wigs, you become like a slave to them because they actually become a part of you and then you start feeling self-conscious when you don't have it on. So now you're like, well, are people looking at me because I don't have my wig on? You know, you know, it becomes just psychological and you have to overcome that. There's a lot of people that have alopecia. I'm one of them and I hid from it for so many years. I was like, I'm just gonna wear wigs for the rest of my life. Like I'm never gonna wear my hair again. And I'm I'm not gonna wear my hair again because I'm not gonna say that I won't let it grow in a little bit or I might let it get a little funky down the line and maybe throw a little color in it. But because I'm always gonna have those spots in my hair that get bald and don't grow back. Like over here on the sides of my head for the last, I'm gonna say like, it was before, I wanna say was it before? I'm trying to think if it was before I retired. Yeah, I think it was before I retired. Those pieces came out on the side and they never grew back. And it feels shiny. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but it feels shiny. So it lets you know that nothing is coming back in these spots. It's clean. It's like a freshly shaven head. <laughs> like, that's what it feels like. Like I said the other day, I was like, I'm going to do me. I'm going to get rid of every excuse that hinders me from being the best me I could be, which is healthy and just thriving and at a, a place where I feel comfortable in my own skin. So that is basically why I did it. I got tired of basically wearing a mask because that's what it was. I mean, don't get me wrong because I love my wigs and they're not going anywhere. I'm not giving them to anybody and I'm not getting rid of them. And I will wear them again, but I just, right now, I like it. Like I'm embracing it and it makes me feel so, so light. And what I noticed before was that my scalp would be itching, like itching, 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 itching. And I'd be like scratching it, you know, I put oil and stuff in it and it was still itching. It really hasn't itched since I cut it. Like it's a different, just different. I washed it twice, I exfoliated my scalp and I, I conditioned it and I just I just love it. Like I just love the, the lightness of it. It feels so, so good. I hope this helps somebody, you know, inspire somebody. Cause I remember when I cut my hair and I was working, when I tell you so many people started cutting their hair, like everybody was coming in with short dudes. I was like, listen, let's do it. I'm blessed to have a good head to um, wear this kind of, hairstyle so that's the good thing about it that's it that's basically my my journey with this hair and i only got through my eyes how's I, this was supposed to last the whole video <laughs> it was supposed to last the whole video but yeah so i hope that it helps somebody you know just get the confidence to say you know what i'm gonna make a change i'm gonna do like what makes me happy you know i'm gonna get me some good earrings because i had a lot of you know, silver earrings that, you know, they get tarnished after a while. So I'm gonna see if I could clean them up. And if not, I'm gonna find some cute earrings that I'm just gonna throw my makeup on and rock it. And I don't want it to always be a day that I have to wear makeup. Like sometimes I don't wanna wear makeup. I might just wanna run out to the store, but I wanna feel comfortable in my skin. And I wanna be able to go to the gym and not care that people are looking at me because I don't have no hair. So thank God, you know, I didn't have to cut it because I have, you know, a real medical condition that made me have to cut it. In all actuality, it really did because it's it's not allowing me to wear it. You know, it, it will grow. You'll see it in the video that I put up, you know, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna share some of the footage. But you know, I was like, sometimes I want my head to breathe. And then like, 
when my boyfriend would come over, I would sleep with my hair on, right? Because you don't want to take it off. You know, in the middle of whatever you're doing, you're like, I'm not taking this off. This, this is not coming off at all. And I made sure it was tacked down really good. <laughs> but as we got closer, he was like, listen, take it off. Walk around with your jail braids. It's all good. And I was like, are you serious? I was like, you still going to love me when, you know, when you see my jail braids? Because, like, that's a very, like, vulnerable place to be in and he was like yeah he was like I'm, I'm just I'm gonna love you either way he didn't he didn't stick around too much longer after that though he really didn't but I believed him he made me feel comfortable so I was like okay I felt more comfortable with my um <laughs> with my bonnet on he was like no take the bonnet off whatever I did but like I said <laughs> he broke up with me after that I don't know if it was because of the hair and maybe he really couldn't deal with it maybe he was like Hell, why I told her to take that um <laughs> that wig off. Like you never know what people are thinking, but it was all good. If he was meant to be here, then he would be here. And that's just it. I hope I could get these eyes the same because I'm sitting here talking and not paying attention to what I'm doing. I like these purple shadows. It looks pretty. It was maintenance. Like when I shaved it the first time, because I still had hair on my head, like you still had to take care of it. I had to I mixed up a concoction of oils. And it was making my hair grow and it, it was soft and I would get my little curls popping. And it was cute. And then when I did the uh, the blonde, it was cute. And then I did like a red, but I wanted like a, a bright red at the end. They never could get it the color that I wanted it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. It, it kind of toned down my um everything. <laughs> I was like, I don't like this color. It just didn't make me happy. I mean, you know what makes you feel good. And I didn't, I didn't like that that red color. I'll put a picture of that one on the screen too. A lot of you guys reached out and it really touched me just to know that, you know, it was it was nothing but positivity, like nothing nothing negative and and that makes somebody feel good when they are being vulnerable. And I'm being vulnerable to the world. Like it it was just such a good feeling. So I just want to thank you guys for really just, you know, making me say you did the right thing. Like you came out so my motto for the year is no excuses. I don't have no excuse now not to get in the gym. This water aerobics, and it was so much fun. And you know, you can lose a lot of weight in the water, like the resistance. And I have, you know, some knee issues. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. But then again, the hair came in. I was like, I don't want to wet my hair. I don't want to do this. So now I could do all of these things that I wanted to do. I'm so excited to get, get started with my transformation, my no excuses transformation. So that is my motto for 2024, 20, no excuses. Let me just show you all the colors that I used real fast. I use this purple, this purple, this purple. Basically every purple. This one and then that color on the lid. I like it. So that's what I'm doing with that. I mean, it was so long to do those eyes. Like my whole conversation is done. So I do have another story. Okay, so when I retired and I moved down here, the passion twists were in. So I did some passion twists in my hair. It took me two days to do them, right? And I'm sitting there. It was cute. And I was like, oh, it's not even heavy. Cause they was like, oh, you think it's gonna be too heavy for your hair? I was like, no, like you don't even feel it. I was sitting down watching TV one night. This was two days later. And the braid was on the tray in front of me. And I was like, where did that come from? That came from over here. I think that, okay, so that's when that patch came out. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, what happened? The whole braid came out. I was like, this is crazy. So that was the last that I cut my hair before today. Cause once that happened, I said, you know what? I took all of those braids, those passion twists that took me two days to do and I shaved off my hair. But this time I shaved it and I still kept my wigs on. Cause I was like, I'm gonna shave it off. Nobody can see what's going on under here. I think that was like at the point that I was like, you know what? I'm never gonna be able to do anything with my hair anymore and wear a wig. I was like, this is what it's gonna be for the rest of my life. I'm gonna have to wear wigs forever. And you know, you get used to the weight of a wig, but when you take it off and there's no weight on your scalp, <laughs> it's wonderful, that's all I can say. I feel so free. I mean like, when I say I feel so free, I feel so, so free. It's very liberating, it's courageous, 
it's so many different feelings, but I love it. All right, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of eye cream on. I have quite a few different eye creams, but you know the one that I love the most? This one right here, the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Eye Cream. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it, but it just gives the under eye a really nice feel. It's lightweight, it goes right into the skin, and it looks good under the makeup. We can cover over that residue. I don't wanna rub no more and get my eyes irritated. I wanna find like the perfect lash, right? Cause most of my lashes, you know, when you have hair, you gotta get a different lash when you don't have hair. Like you don't want something that's so heavy cause now that you could see your face, like you don't want something that's so overpowering. It's like, oh, I'm gonna try a different lash today. This one is a little more wispy and fluttery looking. so. I like that. I'm gonna put this Nimia License to Glow Serum. I'm gonna use that on my face because I want it to be glowy. And once I put this on, then I'm gonna put my lashes on. See the color of it? It just gives your skin a really nice glow. And this is like a primer also. So I'm gonna try this lash right here. This is the Cherry Blossom 3D Silk. 922. I'm talking to you guys. I'm trying out makeup that I purchased and haven't picked up since I purchased it. So I wanted to see like if I'm gonna love this color of foundation because I bought this foundation and I like the foundation but the color to me was like a little off. So they had a darker shade and I bought that. So I want to see if I'm gonna like that because I love the Revolution IRL filter foundation. I love it. It's so beautiful on the skin. And so is this primer. The Revolution IRL Skin Filter Pore Blur Primer. Cause I only used it one time. So that's it. i shake it up a little bit. I'm just gonna put it like in the areas that I have my pores. I tried it before, but I didn't. I only wore it, I think once or twice, but I felt like it, it blurred out really, really nicely. And it's sort of like a, a moussey texture, but it's lightweight. So let's see, it feels very smooth going on, like very, very smooth. Put some on my nose, cause that's where I really have oil. And around my mouth, around my mouth gets oily. I'm just gonna let it sit for like five minutes and then start doing my makeup. This IRL filter, long wear foundation, breathable soft matte, it's one of my favorites. So I picked up another color, this F18, I ordered it online. It's a little dark. I'm gonna mix the two of them and see if it comes out with my perfect shade. This is like one of my favorite, favorite foundations. It's very inexpensive, but very beautiful on the skin. I don't know what made me pick up number 18, shade F18, I don't know, but I never used it. See, it's very chocolatey. I'm gonna put some of this one in there and mix it, and it should give me Hopefully, the shade that I need. I'm just gonna stir it up with this. It still, it still looks a little, a little dark. Let's see, I think it might be okay. I'm gonna use this brush right here, Sigma F80. Now it has a horrible, horrible smell. It's beautiful on the skin. It might be a little dark. Look how pretty this foundation is. It's so gorgeous. I love it. When I tell you I love it, like I love it. It looks weird, right? <laughs> Will you take the foundation up that high? <laughs> it's like, well, how much further back are you going to go? <laughs> but that's all right. Like, if I was going out, I probably would, like, do the whole scalp. Just to give it, like, some uniformity. Oh. <laughs> you really, you really can see it. But that's all right, because once I contour and everything, you're going to see it come back to life. The shade is not so bad. I think I would want it a little bit lighter. I mean, it blends it with my neck nicely, but not with my chest, but it looks good. Let's see if we put the rest of this on it. Like, what does it make the scalp look like? Oh my God, that looks so much better. Now I see how people be getting their scalp looking like their whole head. You see that? It looks gorgeous. I lo look at the difference. Oh my God, I gotta use all of this on my head. <laughs> it looks so much different. And I guess I gotta set it too. See, these are things I'm learning about my bald head. Yeah, because you know, the scalp is discolored, especially like spots that had hair in it. You could see the difference. Like it's, I told you I could see where I used to part it. Wow, that's different, right? That's different. I think I might like it with a little stubble. Okay, we're just gonna do that. 
because that means I gotta wash my head again. And I don't usually like to open my pores like that when I am going to sleep. Like too close to time to go to sleep. I still have some left, but it looks really, really dark now. So their concealer is one of my favorite concealers. So let's look at the skin. I think actually the color is perfect. So we're gonna put this on and start with this under the eyes. They were the first ones to come out with this kind of dope for the applicator that I know about. I'm gonna tell you what shade this is. This is shade C13.5. I always like to put concealer over my top lip because I get a mustache. All right, I'm gonna put this on. This is the e.l.f. Contour Beauty Wand Halo Glow in the color Deep. I think I should've did one side at a time because I think that dries fast. Let me blend this out first. So see how dark it is, but it's not super pigmented. Not with this dark color foundation. So it's like, do you bronze the whole head? Wow, this is different. This is a different way of doing makeup, but I guess you gotta take the bronze back enough, right? Yeah, I guess you gotta kinda blend it in. So this foundation looks pretty dark because it actually oxidized. I still like it though. I think that contour looks very nice. This just dried down some. So I like how everything blends in together. That I'm gonna add the lighter shade of this color. It has like a peachy undertone. It's like you can make your hairline <laughs> wherever, wherever you want it to be. I'm just gonna go back here and just blend this in a little bit more. I like it. This looks like it's turning out to be <laughs> almost a full face of Revolution. I like their products. Okay, I'm going to pat this out. You see how smooth this under eye is? It looks so, so good. Okay, of course I'm using my She Glam Insta Ready Face and Under Eye Duo. I always use this to set under my eyes. I love it, nice. I'm just gonna put it everywhere that I have concealer. Yeah, I'm sure they have loose powder. I never looked. This is a cream bronzer by them. And this is a powder bronzer. This cream bronzer is very dark. Let's try it. We already have one on though, but that's more like a contour. Let's see if this is gonna give us a bronzy color. Sometimes the colors look darker than they really show up. And hopefully it has a nice red hue to it because that's what we need, a bronzer now. I bought these and I've been trying to use them forever. The holidays came, so now I get to use everything that I purchased. Let's try and see. It actually does have a nice red undertone. Do you see that? This is pretty. Wow, okay. Look at that, that added something. Nice, very nice. Okay, I like that. See how both of them just kind of, it kind of slenderizes the face? Very nice. And just a little bit up here. That's actually gorgeous. Okay, so they have some liquid blushes also. And I have them. So we're gonna try them and see what they look like. Okay, so I'm gonna try these two right here. They're called the Revolution Super Dewy Liquid Blushes. I have three colors, but I'm gonna try two of them. And it's so funny because when I buy liquid blushes or most blushes I always buy like something in the red family something in the neutral family for my complexion and then like a pink or whatever to give a little pop to the face but I'm loving this makeup so far it looks so pretty this one is called blush me up I just don't like that it's a squeezy tube so I'm gonna put some on the back of my hand like that all right I'll use this brush this is a tapered highlighter brush by Sigma F35 and I'm just gonna take a little bit and tap it there and then take a little bit over here and tap it and then we're gonna put it in. We want everything to look as seamless as possible. The color's nice and it's nicely pigmented too. And what I'm noticing is so far that primer, first of all, my skin looks gorgeous. The skin is so, so smooth just so beautiful and smooth now to me i definitely think that the foundation could have been a little bit lighter only because i like a little more dimension when i put my products on but i i like this i think it looks good 
I used most of it. I might as well just use the rest and just go in here. I feel like we need a little pink, this light color. Now, I don't have any of their lip products or highlighters that I could think of. I like this pink. I like these wet and wild powders. I don't know if you guys ever tried it before. This one has like a yellow undertone. I probably should have used the pink, but I'm gonna use this. Yeah, these powders are like four bucks. Or maybe maybe seven. I think I got them on sale when I got them. This one is deep, which is a darker one, and that one was banana. That's what the color looks like. That sets in nice on the skin, this color. Let's try setting the bronzer area with this bronzer. Yeah, I really just wanna say thank you to you guys for just allowing me to be so vulnerable and sharing my hair journey with you guys. I hope that some of you, you know, feel comfortable enough to tell your stories in the comment section. I can't wait to just be there to like support each other because alopecia, is no joke and I have traction alopecia that is really nice bronze color do you see that that's what it looks like that's pretty this might wind up in my everyday rotation I like this shade I like that it gives a nice amount of color like it really really does very nice okay I'm gonna go under the eyes and just finish finish the under eyes real fast I'm going into my two purples. I have this Revolution mascara. It's called the 5D Lash Pal Volumizer Mascara. Let me see how big the brush is. That's a huge brush. I'm gonna try this pencil right here. This is number 12 in the pencils that I bought from She Glam. I wanna see if it's gonna show up here. Yeah, I see something already. I like that, that's nice. I like that these pencils actually show up. For me to have paid like $8 or $7 for like, I think it was 24 pencils or 18 pencils. 20 water gel liners. And because this is white, it came out looking purple. But it looks good. It gave a nice amount of brightness, and that's what I was looking for. I'm going to use this mascara, which is the Essence Last Princess Mascara. One of my favorites. When I say favorite, I mean favorite. <laughs> and I think I bought a lash primer from them. So I'm just going to pat this in. Okay, so I love this Physicians Formula powder to set my face with and like bring everything down to one color so that's what we're gonna do with this this is like the bronze it smells so good it has something called cool, like maru maru butter in it and um it's good i'm just gonna set this up here because it's makeup so i gotta set it i'm not gonna put no setting spray on it though because i shaved it today and I don't want to burn. I don't want to do too much until I, I know my skin. <laughs> you know, it's only been a couple of days. I don't know how sensitive the skin on my scalp is going to be. It is a learning curve. This makeup is beautiful. Okay, I have this Uniconic Shield Fixer Spray. I want to say it's a matte setting spray. I'm going to use it because I think I only used it one time. I don't know. I think it gives a kind of matte finish. I hope. It gives a little life to the face. If not, then we'll use something else. It feels nice. It smells good. I'm gonna contour my nose with this because I like this color. I think it's pretty. This is my favorite contour brush for the nose. The Makeup by Ariel A20. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. I love that. That is so pretty. I'm loving this bronzer. I just love trying new makeup. <laughs> I really do. This is so pretty. Very nice. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, I'm gonna see if I could just blend that out a little bit. I don't think I have any Revolution highlighter or powder blushes. Every time I do like a face that could be a full face of something, that's when I realized that I don't have a product by a particular brand. 
I add more and more products to my collection. But when they look good, then you're not afraid to spend your money on another item from that brand because Makeup Revolution so far has not disappointed me. Now I have, I think like two of their eyeshadow palettes that I've never used. So guess what? We know that it is coming very soon. That is so pretty. Do you see that? That is so, so pretty. I'm freaking loving this makeup. Okay, do we need a little bit of something? Just a little hint of a little lighter pink here. Yeah, see that? That just brings, oh my God, I love that. See, you could be sexy and bold. I love that. So I'm gonna use this Wet n Wild Precious Petals highlighter. It's one of my favorites. You guys know I love highlighter. Love, love, love highlighter. That is so pretty. I love the look that that setting spray gave to the face. Cause it wasn't too matte. It gave a nice amount of like glow to the face. I'm gonna put it in the corner highlight. This is the color Nas and the color Simpin. Very pretty, I love that. I wanna spray my face again while I'm thinking about a lip. Okay, so I have these two NYX Smooth Whip Matte Lip Creams in the color Birthday Frosting and Pillow Fight. I've worn them before. Let's see if this is what we need. I'm gonna line with this color. <laughs> this might be a bit much. We may have to change the lip because I think this lip might be too much. I actually think it looks gorgeous. I really do. I'm gonna put a little bit of concealer. I'll let it dry first and I'll put a little bit of concealer. But I think this is, this is gonna be it guys. I don't know why, it's a lot. It's saying a whole lot, but I love it and it's different. And why not? Like we're being daring, we're being bold. To rock a bull head like this, you gotta come and when you gotta be noticed anyway, you might as well, you might as well be noticed. I love that lip. I think that it gives such an ombre effect, right? So let me tell you what color concealer I use. Cause somebody's gonna ask me, later and I'm not gonna remember. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer in the color Medium Beige. That was it. It just added like a yellow. Oh, the lips look so ombre, it's so pretty. Only cause it looks so one dimensional, like it didn't look, you couldn't tell the difference. I think that's, okay. So I really, really love the way this makeup looks. It's a lot, it's very, very glam, very extra. But when you have a bull head like this, like you have to play it up. So I think the eyes look gorgeous. I think the lips kind of mimic what's going on up here because I use that orange and yellow up there. I don't know if you can see it. I think this looks beautiful. I just think everything came out really, really gorgeous. I'm gonna go over everything that I use. Like I really, really like this. So you guys wanna see this with gloss? Cause I don't really think it needs gloss on the lips. I think gloss would give it too much. Like it doesn't need to be glossy. I think the lips, just the way that they are, look like sunset lips. Like these eyes up here look like sunset eyes. This look like sunset lips. I, I love it. Okay, let me just gather everything on this desk so I can go over everything that we use. But I love it. Let me know guys, let me know in the comments what you think about this makeup, but I think it looks beautiful. Okay guys, I'm back and I love the way this makeup looks. I don't think it's too much. I think it looks beautiful. Now what I will say is I think I could have did a little bit less of the darker shade of the foundation because I use the Revolution IRL Filter F18 and the F14. And I feel like I should have used maybe one pump of this and two pumps of this. And I think that we would have got a color. This color looks nice. It's a little deep, but it still looks beautiful. It matches my neck, not my chest, but it looks beautiful. Like I really, really like just the way everything looks. And I don't know, sometimes my lighting is washed out. So when I start filming, I might see it look different, but I think that this is 
beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I use, like I said, these two foundations. It's one of my favorite, favorite affordable foundations. I use the Nemia by Nikki Tutorials. This is her License to Glow Serum. I use this to give a glow to the skin. And then I also used it as a primer. And then on top of that, I use this Revolution IRL Skin Filter Pore Blur Primer. And it did an excellent job. Just think of the amount of stuff that I have on my cheeks. And you know I have very textured cheeks. These cheeks look very, very nice. You see a little bit of texture, but nothing like I've seen it before. Sometimes the, the pores are so enlarged. So this primer really did an excellent job. I love this primer. It's like seven bucks. I think the foundation is like 14 bucks or something like that. I'm gonna make sure that I list everything in the description box. I know sometimes I say it and I don't get to do it. I'm definitely gonna put it on there. And that's why I try to make sure that I say it on camera, just in case I forget to make the list. Okay, so I use this Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer to give my face an all over complexion and like set everything. After I applied the setting powder for the face, I did a light one and a deeper one. Um, the lighter one was under the eyes and every place that I put concealer and the darker one was around the lower perimeter of my face. I also put foundation and bronzer on my head. I think it looks beautiful because the skin is so discolored from not being out in sunlight and stuff. So I'm hoping that the warmer it gets, the more of a normal color that my scalp will get. But even if I have to put makeup on it, like this was the first time that I actually used makeup on it. And I just think it looks beautiful. It looks so natural. It looks like, like it's my scalp. Like it really does. That just goes to show you how natural the foundation looks because it doesn't look masky. It doesn't look like, what do you got going on on your head? It just looks beautiful. I love it. Then I have the Makeup Revolution Mega Bronzer in the color Dark Four. I love this color. This color is going into my everyday rotation. It's beautiful. It is very comparable to the NARS bronzer that I love so much. Do you see the similarity in the colors? Ooh. Yes. Then I have the cream bronzer, which I didn't think, I was like, this bronzer looks really dark. I didn't think that I was gonna really like it, but the color is good. It's a nice, rich, deep red undertone so it's beautiful i love love loved it then i use the elf halo glow beauty wand to contour with it's good this color is good for what i need it for with this look it was deep enough to show up with everything that i have going on with the color of the foundation and everything it was good and then i used the two revolution super dewy liquid blushes i love both colors this was you had me at first blush is this one and the other one is blush me up both beautiful beautiful blushes nicely pigmented they weren't overly pigmented but they were beautiful on the skin then i use the l'oreal infallible 24 hour fresh wear blushes in the color legendary berry and confident pink those were my powders to set with i use the revolution ir filter finish concealer i use it in c 13.5 and C12. I think I probably could have brightened it up a little bit more, but it looks good to me. Like, I think this looks really, really nice. And I sprayed and set my makeup with this Uniconic Shield Fixer by Self Beauty. I ordered this off of Amazon because somebody recommended it to me. And it's really beautiful. It gives the skin a really nice, lifelike appearance. And then I use on my lips the NYX Smooth Whip Matte Lip Cream in the color Pillow Fight and Birthday Frosting. Those are the two things that I have on my lips as well as this e.l.f. concealer in the color medium beige. So that's everything, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed my, my hair journey, my realization <laughs> of just knowing that you don't have to hide behind a wig. If you have alopecia the way I had it in the top of my head, I mean, like, I would get, you're gonna see the video. I'm gonna put the clips of me shaving my head 
but it was very thin in the center and my braids were like I felt like you could read my my mind <laughs> that's how thin my hair was I mean it was a nice length it was like probably down here when I stretched it out it was probably a little bit longer if I would have like blown it out or something like that but it was so fragile and just so it was very easy to come out of my scalp which I've never heard of such a thing like I could touch it and it would just come out. I think the morning that I decided to really cut it, when I was taking my, my braids out that morning and a piece of hair came out from the root, like a thick piece, and I was like, why? Why are you saving this? Like, even if I wasn't gonna rock this baldy, I could still put my wig on top of it. I was like, what are you saving it for? You take an hour to wash it and braid it and oil it down, for what? Like, for what? You, you're you never going to wear it. I knew I was never going to wear it. Like, I would take it out and be like, oh, okay, I could do like a little twist out or something. And I probably could have because it was enough hair where it would be full. You wouldn't be able to see the bald spots, but I knew they were there. And it just wasn't a happy feeling. So, I was ready to just get over it. And I think I'm done, like, trying to see if it's going to grow back in. I don't know. Like, I'm, like I said, I feel free. I feel so much lighter. I feel so much happier and I don't have any more excuses. So my motto, like I said, for 2024 is no excuses. And this hair was stopping me from working out. You know, that was my excuse. I was like, oh, I don't want to wet it because I don't, I don't have to do it again. I'm going to have to, you know, even if you have a wig that is your workout wig and then your wig that you're going to film in, you still have to put the adhesive down, lay the lace down. Sometimes I would film like when I first started I wouldn't I wouldn't put adhesive on it and I would look at the footage later and I'd be like how come your hairline started here and then your wig slipped back back here so it's just a lot the process was very tedious it was like by the time I got finished filming I was exhausted anyway guys thank you for allowing me to be vulnerable with you thank you for watching I love you guys and I just can't wait to do more content for 2024 Wait till you see my transformation. Like, I am going to transform in front of your very eyes. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. If you like this video, please give the video a thumbs up. And I cannot wait to hear your comments. I will see you guys in the next video. And if you want to watch another one, I'm going to link the videos, one of the videos on the screen. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. I love you. <laughs> let, oh, let me know what you think about this makeup. Like, do you think it's too much? Because I really don't think it's too much. I think it looks beautiful, especially the lips. Like, I love, love, love the lips. And the good thing about those smooth whips, I don't know if you ever tried them before, they're very long-lasting. So you can eat, and it's still going to be on. Now, this lighter part might come off a little bit, but it may, because I put it on while it was still wet, it may lock in with it. I'm not going to have it on for long. I'm probably going to be up like another hour. I'm going to finish the rest of my salad, and... I'll let you know how long the lip lasts. But like I said, I'm not going to be up that much longer. So that's it, guys. I hope it wasn't too long.